Without any um, further ado, uh, it is my incredible honor and pleasure to introduce Olajimoki Ojulei, or Jumi, um, as our presenter today. Uh, she is a Nigerian registered nurse, midwife, lecturer, trainer, conference speaker, and author with 16 years of experience across various clinical and academic settings. She has had training and experiences in educating women and their families, both on virtual and on-site platforms. She also has volunteered at several outreaches, outreach programs targeted at the complete wellness of the childbearing woman and her family. Jumi has undertaken research which focused largely on women, children, and adolescent populations, including orphans and vulnerable children. She has presented the findings at national and international conferences. Her diligence and passion for nursing and midwifery has always distinguished her as a dedicated nurse and midwife. She is the lead facilitator and founder of the Research Resource Hub, a social enterprise and educational research center in Lagos, Nigeria, which is dedicated to research capacity building of students and professionals to help them confidently undertake research as it applies to their professional practice and to navigate the research process with ease. In 2020, Jimmy released the Research Workbook for Health Science Professionals, Your Guide to Completing Your Research Like a Pro, which is now being sought for at various institutions within and outside Nigeria and also is available on Amazon. She is a journal reviewer, member of the prestigious Honor Society for Nursing, and an international Marcy Society for Perinatal Mental Health. She currently serves as the global mentee representative for the International Marcy Mentorship Program. Jimmy is currently a doctoral student at the University of South Florida College of Nursing with a focus on maternal mental health and maternal and child health genomics. Welcome, Jimmy. Yeah, good evening, everyone. I know where you're joining from. Thank you so much for attending this session. Can you hear me, please? Can yes, can you? Oh, good. Okay. All right. Okay. So, thank you so much, Dr. Sindinelli, for that kind introduction. And um, it's an honor to share this presentation today. Um, it's a concept analysis I um, did recently. And I would like to acknowledge um, Dr. Cecilia Getcher, who who also shaped, you know, my thought process while undertaking this concept analysis. Um, okay, I need to take the presenter, right? Okay. Um, can you make me the presenter, Dr. Nelly? Yeah, I can't. I just asked the VIDM moderator. Okay. I, okay. I have it now. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll be speaking on the topic um, perinatal nurses and midwives self-efficacy in promotion of perinatal mental health. That's going to be the focus today. And uh, um, basically, um, some disclaimer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So some disclaimer. I'll be using the word um, perinatal nurses, um, midwives to mean people, definitely people who care for pregnant women, postnatal women perinatal mental health and um, as we go along this is going to be the outline of our discussion this evening just an overview an introduction to perinatal mental health the role of um, perinatal nurses and midwives in perinatal mental health why we conducted the pop, um, concept analysis um, overview of the literature review analysis of the concept and the implications that we highlighted all right, I start with this quote from Albert Bandura, um, which states that in order to succeed, people need a sense of self-efficacy to struggle together with resilience to meet the inevitable obstacles and inequities of life. I'll take that again. He said, in order to succeed, people, perinatal nurses, midwife, needs um, a sense of self-efficacy to struggle together with resilience to meet the inevitable obstacles and inequities in our practice and that was by albert bandura and um, 
just an overview of the concepts. Um, we have self and efficacy. So it's from two different words. The term doesn't appear as one word. And self basically is consciousness of one, one's own identity. While efficacy is basically talking about capacity, power to produce a desired outcome, a desired effect. And um, Andrea defines self-efficacy to be an individual's belief in his or capacity to execute behaviors necessary to produce specific performance attainment. Yeah, so that concept was originally proposed by Bandura in 1985, and he has defined it that way. But let's look at um, why we are talking about this concept in perinatal mental health, which is the focus for today. Um, so perinatal mental health refers to the mental health of women from conception through the first postnatal year. Some studies have even identified that it goes up onto the second um, postnatal year. Just the mental health, the emotions of women from conception all through pregnancy to uh, so they deliver the baby two years. And the period is recognized as a uniquely opportune time for perinatal mental health um, interventions um, that ranges from screening these women, assessing the women treatment, um, referring of women to um, special, women who's, who's screen positive, you know, to mental health disorders, um, referring them to specialist mental health providers. And um, perinatal mental health issues have been identified as the most common psychological complication of childbirth. Um, yet many women do not seek for help. Studies from high-income country, from low-income country, has shown that at least about seven to fifteen percent of women suffer antipartum depression, which is not even talked about most of the time. We hear a lot about postpartum depression. Yeah, at least about ten percent of women. You know, experience postpartum depression. That's aside every other um, psychological complications like anxiety disorders, mood disorders, psychosis, and you know, substance abuse and all that. And this is even worse in low and middle income country where screening is inadequate, referral systems are um, almost absent. Where they are absent, the pathways are not clear. Um, perinatal mental health issue is. Um, Perinatal mental health is a family issue. You know, studies have shown that um, maternal health, mental health problems are not only detrimental to the woman's health, but they have been linked to reduced um, sensitivity and responsiveness, you know, in the way the woman cares for her child, um, sometimes preschool, uh, school age, you know, up to even adolescent years, and of it's results into behavioral problems even in young children. It not only affects this woman, whether pregnant or postnatal, it affects you know, the new dad, it affects the newborn, it affects the caregiver around the woman. Yeah, and um, basically early detection and treatment of this perinatal mental health problems will benefit not only the woman herself, but all the other people involved in this, uh, in this, in this circle. What are the roles of perinatal nurses and midwife in perinatal mental health? Yeah, now that we have seen what this is all about, so we're saying that um, perinatal uh, nurses and midwife are in the key position to screen women. You know, trying to identify women who uh, uh, who, who, who have um, any any sign or symptoms of these disorders. Um, providing education regarding the disorders to pregnant and postpartum women and their families. So not just the woman alone, but her family or whoever attends the clinic with her or who comes to receive care with her because the woman definitely goes back to a family and stays with the family, you know. To ensure that um, um, perinatal nurses and midwives are also to ensure that they prevent, you know, perinatal mental health disorders and where this occurs, appropriate treatment or referral to specialist providers where necessary and um, because this is a concept analysis we just want to quickly you know identify some synonyms that um, that um, that look like um, self-efficacy but not exactly self-efficacy of course there are synonyms like the effectiveness efficaciousness productiveness you know those are terms that uh, you can replace but we really need to pay attention to the surrogate terms the, the, sur the, the surrogate terms that I have listed here, 
self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-attitude because they show a relationship to self-efficacy and they are sometimes used to depict self-efficacy, but they have their own defining attributes and they do not exactly mean self-efficacy. It's going to show up in some of the um, concepts that we, um, the analysis we're doing tonight, but it's exactly not self-efficacy. We'll see shortly how, you know, the attributes of self-efficacy and why we are bringing that term into this discussion. Self-esteem is like a general feeling of self-worth or self-value, you know, self-confidence is a perception of your competence, your capability to fulfill a particular expectation. Attitude is a, like a complex mental state involving your beliefs, feelings, and values, your disposition to act in certain ways. So all of these are direct, they are related to self-efficacy, but they do not exactly mean self-efficacy. And we'll see that shortly. But what's the purpose of this concept analysis is basically to utilize the worker and avant method to further clarify the term self-efficacy, which has been a um, a old concept as it were, but we are using and translating it into the field of perinatal mental health in relation to the role that midwives play in the field. And um, a literature review was conducted and um, we searched um, three major databases um, looking at studies in English language precisely from 2009 to 2021, looking at the concept of self-efficacy amongst perinatal nurses and midwives and how they use this to promote the perinatal mental health of the women they care for. Um, key terms like self-efficacy, nurse midwife, nurse and midwife, perinatal mental health illness, depression, midwifery students, students, lay midwives, all of these were used in the set strategy. And here is the Prisma flow chart we came up with. And at the end of the day, we have 23 studies that were utilized for the concept analysis. Yeah, and um, I just want to, um, listening to the open uh, pre-conference session we had for the virtual international, the um, Virtual International Day of the Midwife earlier today. It was so interesting to hear that, um, you know, models will be rolled out shortly, and this includes perinatal mental health, which is so interesting because there is an um, obvious gap, as we will see in some of the studies that were reviewed in this concept analysis. You know, there is obvious gap there, and this, that is responsible for some of the things that we've seen among perinatal nurses, among midwives, and, you know, the gap showing up more in the childbearing population that we serve as perinatal nurses and midwives. So the studies have shown that um, women are actually prone to perinatal mood disorders during this perinatal period. It's, um, some of these are due to hormonal imbalances, you know, that the woman undergoes and um, sometimes it, it has nothing to do, so, so sometimes is irrespective of socioeconomic status or number of children the woman has had or the kind of family she's come from or something, you know, this can happen to any woman. Um, talking about perinatal mental health, um, perinatal mental illness can happen to any woman. So while perinatal nurses and midwives, while we have a key role in supporting the perinatal mental health of women, um, studies have shown that only 50% of women who experience these disorders are actually identified. And of course, there are still so many, much more to be done. Apart from identifying these women, they need to be assessed, they need to be treated, they need to be referred when necessary. And this perinatal, mental health, um, perinatal period is actually the time that this happens, but women are not identified. Studies also show that the education of nurses and midwives, their training, the level of confidence that they have, the attitudes that nurses and midwives have towards women who present with perinatal mental illness, you know, the level of professional support, um, midwives' perceived learning needs, you know, around perinatal mental health, actually determines the support and care that they give to women, um, um, women experiencing perinatal mental illness. Um, we're using the concept because Bandura has said that self-efficacy makes a difference in how people feel, think, behave, and motivate themselves. And self-efficacy is actually a self-perception of one's ability to perform competently some task in a particular setting. And this self-efficacy is very important for perinatal um, nurses and midwives in their practice. 
in their practice of um, perinatal mental health because it is linked to significant maternal and child health outcomes. You know, it, it results in even child developmental delays, even and affects children up to school age. It affects their outcome in school. It affects adolescents. You know, some of them get exposed again to adolescent pregnancy and so many issues and like a cycle just keeps going on. Some of these things having intergenerational impact and um, so it's very important that we talk about self-efficacy for perinatal nurses and midwives. Um, perinatal nurses and midwives, talking about their self-efficacy, it can increase or amper their motivation. You know, and that's why it's important. It's, uh, it can motivate them to support women who are suffering from these disorders. And um, Bandura also mentioned that people with higher self-efficacy approach difficult tasks as challenges persevere and do not try to avoid them. And that means that a nurse self-efficacy or midwife self-efficacy is correlated to their professional autonomy and empowerment. And um, the reason why we're talking about this is because it's an aspect of care. Perinatal mental health care is an, is an underserved aspect of maternity care. And, um, you know, midwives, we believe that there is a whole lot to attend to with this woman. You know, whether in the pregnancy period or the postnatal period, there's a whole lot to attend to. And I mean, we can as well just leave the mental health of the woman. But we're saying that perinatal mental health disorders is the most, you know, common psychological complications. But, you know, a lot of attention has been drawn, you know, to the physical complications that women go through. Yes, but the psychological complications have been left unattended to. And a lot of women are suffering that, um, suffering this. So in this um, presentation, self-efficacy of perinatal nurses and midwives will be defined as um, a combination of the nurses and midwives' knowledge, their confidence, their attitude, their perception of illness, and the infrastructural factors that determine their role in promoting, assessing, and managing women with perinatal mental health problems. Now, Bandura, you know, you tell, um, because this is based on the theory of self-efficacy and so we're using some of the attributes, the concepts that, you know, the theorist himself has proposed and he identified three major attributes, excuse me, of um, self-efficacy, listed them as cognitive processes, affective processes, and the locus of control. So what I want, so for the cognitive process, it, it basically refers to the knowledge base, you know, the professional training, technical skill and expertise of um, perinatal nurses and midwives with regards to perinatal mental health promotion, identification of women who are prone to these disorders, and caring, actually caring for the women with problems. So this is really talking about the knowledge base and expertise that perinatal nurses and midwives have or should have you know, to be able to develop self-efficacy. The affective processes basically, you know, is um, a strong source of um, incentive itself, um, motivation for perinatal nurses and midwife. And it has been reported that um, affective processes, you know, have, you know, um, dual motivating roles because the more self-satisfied people are, the more they are motivated to accomplish their goals, like, you know, supporting women who are going through this disorder, being able to identify, you know, resources in the community, being able to screen them, being able to refer them to where they can get help. Yes, and also be able to work with the multidisciplinary team that is involved in the care of these women. And on the other hand, you know, the more self-dissatisfied people are, Talking about affective processes, it heightens their efforts sometimes, you know, like they are not satisfied with what they see, you know, women suffering this condition and, you know, they just want to go ahead, heighten their efforts and accomplish the set goals by supporting women with perinatal mental health disorder. So, perinatal, um, the attitudes, the motivation and, you know, capacity to render care to these women is also... Um, being supported by the affective processes that perinatal nurses and midwife, you know, experience. And the last one is uh, the locus of control, which can be internal or external. Basically, it's locus of control refers to, you know, the way an individual views event outcomes in their own life. Um, but for this context, we're looking more about the internal locus of control because that way the perinatal nurse um, and midwife is able to not just be reactive 
or passive about what can be done. You know, they want to take responsibility for their action. They want to feel confident about, you know, the capacity to effect change in their practice, in their um, roles of perinatal mental health, especially when they face challenges and barriers, which they would always experience, you know, in their practice, thereby contributing to a strong self, um, self-efficacy for them. And if, uh, on the contrary, when perinatal nurses and midwives have more of the external locus of control rather than the internal locus of control, you know, they believe they cannot support women um, with perinatal mental health care. Like, you have to wait for some things to happen, like you, you are um, being reactive, like reactive and not responsive, not wanting to take responsibility, okay, until this happens before I'm able to do this, and then I can as well just wait all through for negative consequences to occur. And just like we've learned in the keynote session as well that, you know, as leaders, we just need to abandon the excuse, ditch the, you know, all the, all the stories and be able to do what we need to do to support the women that we care for. And so also, Abad Bandura identified um, um, identified, um, sorry, excuse me, it's too fast there. So, identifying antecedents of self efficacy, talking about inactive mastery, um, inactive mastery, the vicarious experience, the verbal persuasion, and physiological arousal. Are what um, Abad Bandura was basically talking about here were, these are the events that need to happen and need to precede the development of self efficacy. So it's not automatic. It's very vital to get the theorist concept that you know, self efficacy will only develop when there is an active mastery, there's vicarious experience for the perinatal nurse and midwife, there's verbal persuasion, physiological arousal, and um, I'll just talk about that in a bit. Um, he identified these as sources of self-efficacy for the inactive mastery is really the most influential source of self-efficacy because it provides the most authentic um, evidence of whether one can master a skill, you know, and what it takes to succeed or to reach, you know, a goal like a performance um, attainment. Yeah, and prior and current mastery of rendering this care, talking about perinatal mental health care, or services to women, is, to women is an important antecedent of perinatal mental health self-efficacy for um, perinatal nurses and midwives. Talking about vicarious experiences, it refers to you know visual experiences of, of a person, seeing other people perform this role successfully, not failing at their roles. And what this do for perinatal nurses and midwives is that um, it helps them to develop self-efficacy because they are able to imitate a role model what they see their peers do or senior colleagues do while they deliver perinatal mental health care you know, to clients. And modeling of perinatal mental health care delivery by colleagues you know, provides additional um, provides midwife an additional judgment of their own capabilities and they feel confident because they've seen colleagues, they've seen peers, they've seen seniors, colleagues do this and they feel, yes, I can do this and I would succeed at this. Verbal persuasion, really talking about like the verbal reinforcement, you know, that nurses and midwives receive. And this can be to encourage or discourage, you see. So it can actually go both ways. The encouragement, there can be qualitative feedback from professional colleagues, you know, highlighting, you know, the importance of this. Oh, you're doing this well. Oh, yes, you need to do that. Yes, you're correct. And, and of course, that also builds leadership capacity. You know, it also develops the resilience in handling very difficult relationships, you know, navigating the system, especially where they um, um, encounter obstacles. The lastly, the physiological arousal, which is basically, you know, it modifies the whole thing. It modifies the inactive mastery, the vicarious experience, the verbal persuasion. And um, some of the antecedents that we found in literature showed that when parental nurses and midwife have positive um, self-efficacy, um, positive antecedents, there is advanced knowledge of perinatal mental health care, not just the care alone, they also understand the pathways of care, there's confidence to support women experiencing this disorder, there's positive attitude to women who have these issues, there's increased ability for perinatal mental health, um, illness perception, they're able to pick the signs and symptoms, even without the woman, you know, saying 
missing you know so much yeah there's also um it has also been identified that there's supportive infrastructural and organizational factors you know where positive antecedents exist there's continuous and qualitative feedback on their performance and studies have also shown that some institutional upgrade their curriculum both the theory and clinical aspect you know just to ensure that um, they develop self-efficacy for perinatal nurses and midwife for the negative antecedents that exist and do not help nurses and midwife to develop um self-efficacy includes um you know when nurses and midwife have um views negative views about perinatal mental health care like this is an abnormality of practice i'm a midwife i should care for normal women i should care for normal pregnancy i shouldn't be doing this but there's a whole lot in the spectrum of care from you know screening women identifying women and assessing women, you know, history taking and all of that, which is part of practice that we need to do. When it also results into negative beliefs about perinatal mental illness. There is limited knowledge. Yeah, where there's negative antecedents, there is limited knowledge, limited confidence and skills across a range of perinatal mental health topics. Midwives show feelings of unpreparedness and inexperience in perinatal mental health care. There's negative influence of colleagues and peers. Yes, and there is also negative stereotypes like no. The women experiencing that kind of illness or that kind of disorders are actually not normal or maybe because they are poor maybe because oh she's an adolescent or maybe because she's had five children or something you know you know giving negative stereotypes to women who have this disorder and of course for negative um antecedents there's also a toxic and negative workplace culture which further lowers the morale within the middle field workforce Consequences of self-efficacy and um, work and advance said that these are things that happen whether the um, consequence, um, whether the, um, there's self-efficacy or not. So this depends on whether there is self-efficacy or there is absence of self-efficacy. Look at the consequence briefly. So positive consequences. So studies have shown that midwives are more knowledgeable and confident about perinatal mental health care. Yes, when they have self-efficacy, they have better attitude towards perinatal women. There is higher sense of perinatal mental illness perception. They they are able to navigate infrastructural factors more easily than others. There's significant reduction of perinatal mental disorders. You know because there's knowledge. You know there is a um, better attitude. So there's reduction of perinatal mental disorders, which is what we want. And there's further reduction of the consequences on the mother, father, babies, caregivers, grandmothers, and everyone around. Where there is um, no self-efficacy, there is limited knowledge, inability to identify these disorders, there's poor health seeking behaviors for the women. Remember we said that part of the um, roles that nurses and midwives have in perinatal mental health includes health education and whether there is a, um, ne a negative self-efficacy um sorry low self-efficacy they are not able to teach women to identify these signs and symptoms to be able to come out to speak when they are experiencing this um this slide is basically talking about some of the scales instruments that have been used in some of the studies that we reviewed, you know, to assess self-efficacy amongst perinatal nurses and midwives, some of them among nursing and midwifery students. Um, all these are tested, um, they are validated instruments, and um, uh, they have good combat alpha value ranges from 0 0.7 to 0.9, and they are very, um, some of them have been uh, translated to other languages, including Spanish, Breton, African, and all of that. So what are the implications of this that we have found? There's implication for practice, in, implications for education and leadership. And we'll look at that briefly. So um, practicing is the most important source of self-efficacy because it actually relies on the um, actual personal experiences as perinatal nurses and midwife we are hands-on professional we we have more confidence we believe more in what we do with our hands and how we are able to directly affect the life of women and the family that we care for so with, when we understand the positive and negative antecedents of self-efficacy so Perinatal nurses and midwives' clinical practice can be enhanced when we identify the facilitators, you know, for self-efficacy and reduce the barrier so that we are able to render effective care. What is this implication for nursing and midwifery education? This has quite a whole lot for education. And I'm so happy that this has been identified and um, we're looking forward to when all these models will be rolled out 
and um, to you know bridge the gap in knowledge and practice. Okay, so it has implications for effective clinical training for nursing and middle school and middle school students because it affects their perceived self-efficacy, um, showing that students with low self-efficacy will avoid situations you know that would likely lead to failure. And um, irrespective of content that has also been taught in classroom, you know students need a demonstration um, of the skills that they need to um, support women with perinatal mental health disorders or to identify women in the perinatal period. And of course, that improves proficiency. So students need to demonstrate, return demonstrate. Also, it studies show that um, the clinical environments that students practice in, their colleagues, the clinical educators' capacity you know, can influence the creation of self-efficacy in students. So again, what students see their educators do, what they see their instructors do, is exactly what they do. So if they feel that, uh, yeah, they don't demonstrate self-efficacy in caring for women, you know, with these disorders, they're like, okay, maybe it's not something I need to do. And studies also have shown that a weak relationship between faculty and hospital, lack of staff and training facilities, unprofessional trainers could adversely, you know, influence self-efficacy. And um, what are the implications for leadership? You know, like we say, everything rises and falls on leadership. Um, it's important that leaders give qualitative feedback from those receiving, you know, training to make to, to make them know that they are actually having important, you know, um, that knowledge they are gaining is very important. And it also helps to address, you know, the social and technical skills. It helps to improve the leadership capacity of nurses and midwives. It helps them to develop resilience while handling, you know, working relationship amongst perinatal mental health. It's very important to note that, you know, perinatal mental health is a multidisciplinary area of practice. You have the social workers, you have the health visitors, you have perinatal nurses, midwives, psychiatrists, psychologists, and you know, so many people in the mix, you know, coming together to ensure that the woman has um, is experiencing good um, perinatal mental health and not illness as it were. So it's very important that leaders give good feedback you know, to those who are getting exposed to this training. Of course, right mentoring is important, continuous support, exposure to clinical practice with you know continuous practice will result in significant effect on the self-efficacy of nurses and midwives. And also effective leadership and education will help um, perinatal nurses and midwives develop and sustain. You know, when they develop this sense of confidence, this self-efficacy, it helps them to sustain it because they don't want to develop it and lose it somewhere along the line. Um, in conclusion, this concept analysis is defined um, research into the concept of perinatal nurses and midwives' self-efficacy with regards to their role in perinatal mental health care. By improving the self-efficacy of nurses and midwives, it impacts their knowledge, their confidence, exposure, training, and their motivation, thereby enabling them to be capable of um, providing effective perinatal mental health care. It plays an important role in supporting women who experience parents and mental health problems and also supporting their families because it's a family issue. I end with this quote from Albert Bandura again, who says that um, people's belief about their abilities have a profound effect on those abilities. So sometimes these abilities can be latent, or you know, we just think that, oh, I cannot do this, or do I think I can do this? What will my colleagues say about what I am doing? Or do I think I have capacity to support women or to join a multidisciplinary team, support women experiencing perinatal mental health disorders? You know, Albert Bandura said that what we believe about these capacities that we carry has a profound effect on those abilities themselves. So um, I think these are my references. And um, Thank you for listening to my presentation. And uh, we'll take questions. Come Thank in. you, Jimmy. What an amazing um, presentation. And I had, I, listening, I just had a, um, myself had a question, and people can go ahead and raise their hand if they have a question or put it in the chat. Um, so really interesting, uh, you know, learning about the self efficacy attributes and antecedents um, and how critical that is in terms of outcomes also, right? And, and uh, 
for patients. I'm interested, in, and you did talk about you know educators and and um, uh, faculty, but I'm interested in the environment as well. You know, particularly in settings where the the rest of the team that people collaborate with. What did you find in your research about how the physicians and the administration and kind of the external forces of the setting might impact self-efficacy for nurses and midwives? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. So, um, like we mentioned, um, like I, I mentioned during the implications for leadership, you know, some of the studies have identified that toxic, toxic workplace, workplace culture has affected midwives in carrying out some of this role. There are some interventional studies that have been carried out to show that, yes, when midwives are supported with knowledge, when they are supported with practice over a period of time, they are able to deliver excellent care. Yeah, but talking about the relationship that exists, yeah, the, some of the studies I found, qualitative studies, actually was not so great, yeah, but this is, but in my own opinion, it bothers more on the self-efficacy of nurses and midwives, what they think about their abilities in this. You know, midwives expressly stated that they do not have the confidence to support women, you know, expressing these disorders or, you know, work with a multidisciplinary team. Because even some of them see it as an abnormality of practice. Feels like, oh, it's for the psychiatrist. Oh, it's for the health visitors. So yeah, these are some of the things that have crippled the self-efficacy of midwives. And of course, that has left midwives not to man their post because again, there is a lot to be done. Imagine saying that 50 to 50, only 50% of women experiencing these disorders are actually identified. So it means that there's a gap in screening and there's a whole lot to be done. So midwives need to take their place. Are not doing what we need to do is obviously creating a gap because the psychologist cannot do everything, the psychiatrist cannot do everything, the social worker cannot do everything, the health visitor cannot do everything. We encounter these women, we understand what they go through in their bodies, but we need to be ready, we need to say that we are ready to take that place, we're ready to build knowledge, we're ready to you know be hands-on. We're ready to work in multidisciplinary team. And all this is possible when midwives are equipped to do this. Thank you. And, and another question kind of on that, how, how do we do that? So, you know, you have some, some midwives on here listening to you. And, you know, you talked a little bit about we need to, to mentor that, we need to demonstrate that in our practice. What do you see, um, Jimmy, because I know your background a bit and who you are and what you're about, and maybe you could give us a little guidance on how you see that in everyday practice as we mentor new midwives and, and our colleagues. Thank you again for that question. So, yeah, for education, so I can also say throughout my practice, I'm sorry, throughout my student days, as a nurse training, as a nurse training, as a midwife, I never, I didn't know that um, as midwives we needed to, of course I read it in the textbook, but never knew that there's something I needed to do, there's something called screening, you know, that I, I can do as a midwife for women, not just women who are experiencing illness, just routine screening. Just the way we screen for gestational diabetes, you know, hypertension and all of that. I didn't know as a student, and that's the gap we're talking about. That's the gap. Of course, I train in a low middle income country, and um, parental mental health is something that's not really talked about. In fact, if there are stereotypes to anything mental health, you know, issues in Africa, for instance. So it's it's I didn't have it in my student days. As a faculty member, taking students back to the clinical practice, you see that they do the, the midwives that they learn from do not know how to do this. So we're saying that talking about curriculum upgrade, there needs to be that because that was obviously absent 
that was there was a gap in that in the talking about curriculum so there was a gap there so we need to work on a curriculum upgrade and that's why i said i was excited to hear that the poetry is working on some models you know to build them um, to bridge the knowledge gap so that's for the theory aspect but for the clinical aspect clinical training of student nurses and midwives this also needs to be developed you know exposing students deliberately you know to this practice telling them about screening you know mentoring them about screening working with midwives who have also built capacity you know so if the midwife doesn't have capacity they cannot show the students anything better that's what i think about it fantastic and a question from halima who wrote are there any plans on how to prevent your professional experience from not influencing your data <laughs> oh well we actually i have not particularly thought of that but yeah that's very important to look at yes yes i've actually not thought about it but um thank you for bringing it up alima <laughs> yeah excellent so th thank you so much um jimmy for your amazing presentation i really appreciate the work that you're doing and and the work you continue to do as a as a um doctoral student and we look forward to to many more years of learning from you and your experience um thank you so much so as we close we'll go ahead and stop the recording And I'll ask my uh, VIDM facilitator to do that.